I turned up? I don't think I am. How about now? Yeah, there we go. All right, well, good evening. Welcome to Lyos Baptist Church. Let's all stand. The song's going to be on the screens tonight. We're going to sing them both twice. Start with, I keep trusting my Lord. I just keep trusting my Lord as I walk along. I just keep trusting my Lord and he gives a song. Though the storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord. He will never fail. He's a faithful friend, such a faithful friend. I can count on him to the very end. Though the storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord. He will never fail. One more time. I just keep trusting my Lord as I walk along. I just keep trusting my Lord and he gives a song. Though the storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord, he will never fail. He's a faithful friend, such a faithful friend. I can count on him to the very end. The storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail. I just keep trusting my Lord, he will never fail. Amen. Amen. I like that song, he'll never fail. Amen. I just keep trusting my Lord because he will never fail. Even now, right? Praise the Lord. The Lord will never fail. I like that. Amen. Remember that. Amen. Amen. Take that song home and wake up in the morning to it. Amen. Sing it to yourself. You know, sometimes our mouths have to tell our, tell our brains what we need to think, or our hearts. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be here tonight. Welcome to Lighthouse Baptist Church. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, Lord, we need you tonight. Father, I pray, Lord, you'd uh, make your presence known, Lord, as we read Revelation. Father, review it to us. Help us understand. Father, give me the words to speak. Lord, we love you. We carefully give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Do uh, remember to keep uh, Nate Brader in your prayers. Um, he is finally up and walking. He's not in ICU anymore. I think uh, they've pretty much got the blood clots under control, but his lungs are still not doing too well. Uh, but uh, I can tell his sense of humor is coming back. So I think maybe that uh, he's getting a little better. He has spurts. Amen. Uh, he still has to be on a lot of oxygen. They still want to get him up and moving. He has to take a lot of uh, uh, medicines and stuff to help keep the fluids off because uh, he's still extremely sick. Okay. Uh, but we know that Lord's answering our prayer. So keep him in prayer. Amen. All right. Anybody else have a prayer request or a praise? I like praises. That is a praise. He's doing good. Amen. That didn't look very good there for a little bit, but with God, all things are possible. Amen. And uh, we uh, we're thankful that, and He recognizes that. He knows that that God is the great physician, and uh, He's given God all the glory, which He deserves it all, uh, because there's nothing that doctors can do at this point. It's all up to Him and the Lord. And so uh, God's been doing a great job, and uh, He's definitely uh, humble. He's already was humble. Uh, but he sure has a lot of joy. It's pretty amazing to watch. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Wow, it's just a, too many people. Hey, Todd, do you turn this mic down? It's a little hot for me. Yeah. Brother? Amen. 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 I'm thankful for my health. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for that and the work he's given me and allows me to continue to work. Amen. Good to have my wife here with us tonight. She's had a rough go, but she's still doing all right. Amen. Thankful for that. Just keep her in prayer if you would. Amen. Anybody else? Everybody having a good week? Had a good conversation with the new principal across the street. and uh, but uh, So they're supposed to be getting back with us on their date. Uh, that they're going to do their uh, 
Halloween stuff so that they thought that would be good if we did something in the same night. So we'll see what night they're going to do it. It's probably going to be like on a Friday night, which is the 29th, or maybe Saturday night, whichever night it is. We're going to try and do it in tandem with them. That way when they show up to the school, they can come right over here to the church. And uh, what a nice way to get the gospel out. Amen? Amen. And so, but anyways, keep praying about that. Amen. They do have a new principal, uh, but that'll be neat. Amen. I hope that you'll be willing to uh, be a part of that. Amen. All right, well, let's, let's go over some things that are coming up. I believe the ladies are doing their Bible study tomorrow. Uh, it was uh, canceled on Tuesday, so it'll be tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. And uh, don't forget that. Amen. All right, so I know they're having a good time with the ladies' uh, Bible study. Don't forget this Saturday at 4 o'clock, uh, we start our church prayer. And uh, just come, and we're, we're only going to just come and pray for the church and, and the direction of the church. That's what, that's what our uh, focus is going to be, uh, the church, okay? And uh, the best thing would be to pray for is Sunday, of course. And uh, we'll want to see God's hand, then we should pray as a church together and see God's hand move, amen, in the, for Sunday. So we'll pray for Sunday, and we're going to pray for different things that our church needs, amen. There are some things we need. We need uh, p- more people to come, amen. amen. Uh, we need to have the power. Notice this is as a church, not as an individual. And uh, so the church will come together collectively, and we'll have a little bit more power. Where two or three are gathered there in my name, there I am in the midst. So we'll pray collectively for our church and uh, watch God work. Amen. I'm excited to see that. So you be here at 4 o'clock, and uh, we'll come down to the old-fashioned altar. And those that you can't kneel, we can sit on the, on the pew, but we'll pray collectively together. Amen. All right. Anything else that we need to look forward to? I think that's pretty much it. Anybody else have anything? All right. Hey, y'all are quiet. Rough crowd. Have a rough week. Everybody have a rough week? Been a good week, but OJ said he's feeling good. Amen. amen. Good. Yeah, amen. All right, well, let's sing our song. All right, up on the screens again. We're going to sing this one twice as well. His name is wonderful. shepherd, the rock of all ages, almighty God is he. Bow down before him, love and adore him. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. One more time. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name wonderful Jesus my Lord he is the mighty king master of everything his name is wonderful Jesus my Lord he's a great shepherd the rock of all ages almighty God is he bow down before him, love and adore him. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. Amen. What a good song to sing before we look at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sing about how wonderful his name is. Isn't that great? That's a good song. How many sing that before? We've all sang that before, amen? Been a while, huh? Well, hopefully we'll learn that, and you'll walk in, uh, to work tomorrow, you'll be singing that song. Wouldn't that be good? Uh, boy, that would be good. Wouldn't the Lord would love that for everyone to hear that come out of your mouth? His name is wonderful, amen? Uh, had opportunity to witness to a man on Sunday for several hours, and uh, be in prayer, if you would, 
and uh, 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 so I'm not going to say his name or anything because we're on live stream, but uh, he was in our services, but we uh, visited with him for several hours, and, uh, and he understands how to get saved. He understands he's not saved, and uh, so the Lord's, uh, he's just not ready yet, and so you, you pray with me, amen, and uh, I can give you his first name after we're not on live stream. This wouldn't be appropriate to say his name on live stream, but pray with me, if you would, that the Lord would uh, help him to receive Jesus Christ, because that's God's will for his life, amen? He knows he's not saved, he's reading his Bible, he's trying to get help from God, but the first help he needs is salvation, and uh, so he knows that, that's clear, we were here till 3 o'clock uh, going over that with him, and uh, so he understands that, we prayed with him that God would help him understand that, and he, I asked him, he says, I'm just, just not ready, I need to think about it some more. And uh, so, but you pray, amen, uh, if the Lord will allow him to think about it more, and uh, that would be a blessing and a miracle if you think about it, uh, for someone to get saved, and uh, it still is a miracle in America, people are so stubborn, amen, and you can't force people to get saved, you have to make sure you, they know you can't save them, I can't save them, I can't pray for them to be saved, it all has to do with them, and repentance is about them between them and God, and I can't repent for people, and I can't say a prayer, and you can't say a prayer if you don't really repent, and so he understands that because he said he said a prayer before, he knows 99.9% .9 that he's lost, and he's had a couple of weeks to think about it, and he knows he's not saved. If he was to die right now, he said, I would probably go to hell where I deserve, and see, that's the whole thing that we were trying to help him understand is that Jesus already paid for your sin. Amen. We deserve to go to heaven. You just have to take the free gift. Amen. It's been paid for. And uh, the only reason you go to hell is because you rejected the free gift of payment. And uh, so your gift of, uh, for not doing that is uh, there's no way you could ever pay for your sins like Jesus did. So you go to a place called hell and you get thrown in the lake of fire for all eternity. And the Lord did not create that for mankind. He created that for Lucifer and all the fallen angels. And they're just trying to deceive you and confuse you. And uh, that's exactly what they want to do is get as many people to go to hell with them because they can't change their destination. But he can change his if he just will receive the free gifts. So anyways, we had a good time. It's been a while since I've been able to uh, sit down and go over it and that extensively. So pray with me if you would. I know that God wants him to be saved. Amen. And so that'll be one of the things that we're praying for on Saturday as well. Amen. All right, we're on B at, underneath Roman numeral 2. Roman numeral 2, capital B. We're under B. And uh, B was what is God's purpose We'll just go, I'm going to be going this over this pretty quickly. I'm not going to go over it extensively. Uh, but B has to do with the purpose of this time. And what time are we talking about? Okay, yes. Remember, chapter 6 begins what's going to happen on the earth, okay? Up until this point, we've only seen what's happened to the church, okay, right? And we've seen that the church is in heaven. And uh, now we're going to look in Revelation chapter 6. This is all helping you understand what's going to go on while we're in heaven, okay? And so, uh, or while we're in heaven, bad things are going to happen on earth. And uh, the, the reason why we're going over this first is so you can understand what's God's purpose for it, all right? And so the word purpose is, means intent or design. We went over that. I'm not going to hit that real hard. And so the first thing we've seen was why God brings such a time upon the earth. Why would he bring such a time on something that he created? Amen. Uh, and scripture gives us several reasons. Number one, under B, was to save Israel. Now, I know that you have these, but some people don't. Number one, the blank there is save. To save Israel. Remember, the tribulation is not for the Gentiles. It's for the Jews. It is. His people has turned their back on him, uh, and uh, this is the only way that they can be saved. <laughs> Amen? They have to go through this. The nation of Israel is presently in a state of unbelief and Christ rejection. Amen? What's it going to take to bring them back? Well, it's going to take the tribulation. A, this is the purpose. Not under, under save is purging his people. Purge. Purge. P-U-R-G-E. Purge his people. 
And uh, you say, well, why would he purge? Well, purge means to cleanse or purify by separating. And the only way, uh, remember the uh, principle that uh, the company you keep will influence you. And so what God wants to do, and he's even told the church this, come out from among them and be what? Separate. Separate. Okay, and so uh, our, the Bible even says we're not even supposed to eat with the unbeliever. Uh, we're not supposed to f- wish them Godspeed. Uh, and we're supposed to be separate. Well, what's interesting here is one of the things that God does first in the tribulation is he separates the what? His people that want to follow him from what? The ones who don't. And that is a purging. And with that purging, we're going to find what happens is uh, uh, B is a refine. He saw not only purges them by separating them to cleanse them, but refining is a more of a purging because it's a finer purification uh, uh, to get out all impurities. So once you separate them from uh, the world, then are they, are they sin-free? No. You've just separated them from ungodly, ungodly what? people (laughs) to make them do what's wrong but they still have issues and that's why they have to be refined and so the tribulation is to separate them from uh, uh, all the ungodly influences and to refine them once they get separated for C which is to save his people amen notice how they get saved they have to get away from all the world they have to have their their insides refined so that they can uh, be saved amen That's what it's going to take. God will prepare his people to receive their Messiah through. This is where we're at. Actually, we're one, two, three. We're on the third dot under here, so we'll go over this really quick. Uh, Harrowing persecution from the Antichrist. Is everybody on the right page? All right. Harrowing persecution from the Antichrist. Now, we broke these words down, if you don't remember. But harrowing means a breaking or a leveling down, an infliction of pain, a punishment, or like the death death or penalty. The next one is divine protection. Divine protection. So notice it takes a harrowing persecution in order for them to receive divine protection. This sounds a lot like us, don't it? It takes a pretty huge blow to break us so that we'll see our need for Jesus. Right? I mean, if you think about before you were saved, you didn't need, what do you need to be saved from? You're good. That's one of the most common things stated by young people today. You say, from saved from what? Well, you're fixing to find that out, aren't you? Amen. Uh, you're going to be saved from yourself. How about that? Saved from sin. Amen. And uh, boy, I'm telling you, the older you get, the more you understand, right? Uh, divine protection. Once they're saved from that, they, once they're broken, they understand through the divine protection from God's shelter or his protection for those uh, that are willing to listen. Notice that. That is key there. Uh, while they're under divine protection, they're willing to what? Listen, amen, something the church uh, needs to get more in tune with, especially during this time, right? You know what, I am thankful for Ellis County. They reinforced Greg Abbott's mandate against uh, our president's mandate, and uh, that just makes me feel even better where I'm at. And uh, if you can't say that's not the province of God, the sovereignty of God, and uh, uh, they're not allowing anyone to make those mandates Uh, in Ellis County. Well, they shouldn't because the governor said that we couldn't as a state. Amen. But I like it when uh, when communities or counties, uh, they confirm what the governor says, and we're right with the governor on that. And it's a blessing to live in this state. Amen. Sure is during this time. Praise the Lord. Please pray for our pray for Texas and and uh, and America with all these things going on amen inescapable military siege remember we talked about that inescapable military siege amen so we left off on the outpouring of the holy spirit so god is going to prepare his people to receive their messiah through harrowing persecution divine protection inescapable military siege and outpouring of the holy spirit because remember the holy spirit will be removed right amen amen it won't be like now be more like the Old Testament. 
Amen. Remember when Saul had the Holy Spirit was removed and David had to come play because he had an evil spirit on him. Someone said, well, was Saul saved? I believe Saul was just because he did some wrong things. If that's the case, when you did all your wrong things, you lost your salvation as well. Uh, but Saul, uh, I believe Saul will be in heaven and right along with uh, David. Amen. Uh, look on with me. The return of Jesus Christ to earth. I don't think there's any blanks there. All right, now let's go to this one, and then we're going to hit number two. An illustration of God's purpose can be seen in the account of Joseph in Egypt, recorded in Genesis 41, 54 through chapter 45 and verse 10. Israel protected, yet through a series of tests, is brought to a place of confessing their murderous rejection of Joseph. Everybody, uh, how many is not familiar with this? Joseph was uh, thrown into a cave and uh, he was taken uh, by the traders more or less and sold as a slave and all the things that Joseph went through. But if, if you think about it, it was everything that he needed to be refined, broken and refined to be put into what? God's divine protection is a perfect story of what's going on here. And because of his uh, breaking, his uh, refining, and his having God's divine protection, God was able to use him to do what? To save God's people. So we say, wow, Joseph went through a lot. Well, he did because of the fact God wanted to use him in a mighty way. And if we'll be willing to be used in a mighty way, we'll, be, we'll go through a lot. Amen? Uh, so God will put you through some tests to be able to be used. And what a, what a blessing. During the famine, uh, the, the, uh, the, ch the people of God's people, Israel, they went to the fertile fields of Gaza, whereas Egypt was going through a famine. So God gave his people, who weren't even from there, gave them the great land, while Egypt had the famine land. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. For God, it does. And the Pharaoh was all for it because he was willing to send uh, uh, he was willing to send his men to help them move. Did you know that? And actually, the Pharaoh uh, thought it was his idea, not Joseph's. And he got excited about it. He's all, oh, well, we'll send a, we'll send a, what do you call them? Uh, 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 chari not chariots, like a wagon. There we go. We'll send wagons and men to go help y'all move. And he was excited about it. See what happens when God's people are right? Even the world wants to help. Are you with me? What a good picture, amen. Good illustration of God's purpose and uh, and Joseph's in Joseph's life. Number two. So remember what we're talking about here. We're talking about uh, how God prepares His people and what is His purpose. So number two is to vanquish Satan. Vanquish is V A N. Q-U-I-S-H. Now, once you understand what that word means, uh, it'll make you a little bit more excited as a Christian, okay? Now, all of us want God to vanquish Satan right now. And the funny thing is, each one of us thinks Satan is attacking us, when all reality, Satan is not. It will be his little, it's probably one of his privates, one of his lower angels or fallen angels, right? Uh, we call them demons, but they're fallen angels. And uh, we're not important enough for Satan. Sometimes we think we are. We get like Naaman, and we think we're somebody, right? When in all reality, when it comes down to it, we're nobody. And uh, Naaman's getting to that point where he understands he's nobody, amen? And uh, so to vanquish Satan, what does vanquish mean? Does anybody know? What'd you say, James? Wipe out? What'd you say? Do away with? He's going to separate. That's You're right. He'll separate him. First, he's going to, uh, who said uh, to conquer? Yeah. He's going to conquer him. And he's going to subdue. I like this one. He's going to subdue him. Okay. And guess what? You know, eventually, you know, what's interesting is the Lord is going to uh, let Satan know who's boss. Because we're going to find out as we go through Revelations. Right now, he's the prince and the power of the air. You know what that means? He can go wherever he wants in the air in an instant. He can, he's free to roam through the air. Huh? wonder why we see UFOs. He's over the prince and the power of the air. He can do whatever he wants. Okay? And him and his, all his fallen angels. But you know when uh, God says that he can't do that anymore, 
and he'll be grounded. And we're going to see that in Revelations as we go through there, where God takes his power of going wherever he wants in the air away, and he's grounded to the earth. That's just God saying, hey, wait a minute, who gave you that ability? Huh? Hey, guess what's next? You know, not only is he going to drop him to the ground, but he's going to put him in a cage for a long time. Uh, do all we're in the millennial, he's going to be in a cage. I like to think of him in a little box, amen, and he's going to be stuck in there. He can't have nothing to eat or drink because he doesn't need it, uh, but he won't be able to bug anybody but himself for a th almost a thousand years because towards the end of the millennial, God's going to say, all right, you're going to be loosed because we have all those people that are going to number the sand of the sea that have to make a free choice to choose to serve the Lord Jesus Christ or not because after the millennial is the great white throne judgment. That's when they get thrown in the lake of fire. They have to make their choice still during the millennial reign. Amen. Uh, so Satan will be vanquished. Amen. Isn't that great to know that? Amen. And all his little fallen angels will follow right along with him. And they'll never bother us again. Daniel's 70th week will bring to a head a great conflict of the ages, uh, which actually began before the earth was formed. Turn to Isaiah. Turn to Isaiah chapter 14. I like hearing about the vanquishing of Satan, the conquering of him, the defeat of uh, I like to hear about him being subdued, because we can't do that. Uh, but you know, the very presence of Jesus can do that. He don't have to say anything. His name is powerful enough. Uh, Isaiah 14, are we there? Verse 9. Look down at verse number 9. It says, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Isn't that funny? It is stirred up. Uh, uh, it stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up uh, from their thrones all the kings of the nations. And all they that speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? That's funny. Art thou become like unto us? Amen. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave. And the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread over thee. And the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven? Here it is. Who is he talking to? O oh, Lucifer, son of the morning. He's not the bright morning star. Son of the morning is not the same as the bright morning star, friend. Don't you be confused uh, like he wants you to be confused. He likes to take that and say, I am the bright morning. No, he's not. He was called the son of the morning. Not this different. Amen. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? Exclamation point. For thou hast said in my, thine heart, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Uh, look at verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look. Oh, why that makes me cry. Praise God. Praise God. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. And they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his uh, prisoners? We'll stop there, but he's got something for him. And I like to know that we're on the victory side. We win. We've already won. Satan knows this part. He's not even close to this church right now. The Bible says that uh, those who read and uh, hear revelations, he doesn't want to be any part of that. He don't want to hear about Jesus Christ. Definitely don't want to hear right now. I don't have to pray the hedge. He don't want to hear where he's going. And neither do the fallen angels. You want to see them flee, read that out loud. They don't want to hear it because they know that we've won and we're victorious because of Jesus Christ. Not because of us, not of anything that I have done. Man, I'm thankful I'm on the winning side. Look down with me at your notes. The sentence of death was passed upon Satan through what? Our Lord's victory at the cross. At this future time and the sentence will be executed. And that's going to be awesome. Praise the Lord. I'm glad I get to see that. If anyone deserves it, he does. 
Amen. Jesus paid for our sins, not his. Amen. He paid for ours. So God wants all the world to come unto him. He paid for their sins. So when they reject Christ, they're saying, I don't want your payment. I want to pay for my own sins. This will help you understand why they have to go to hell. Because you'll never pay for them. That means you'll have to live in eternal damnation. Because it's never good enough. Never good enough. Never good enough. When you think that you're good enough, that's what happens you go pay for your own. It don't work. Amen. Uh, number three. Remember, we're learning what God's purpose is. I'm thankful that it, his purpose is to defeat Satan. Also, number three, his purpose is also to reveal man's true nature. Boy, that's not going to be pretty. To reveal man's true nature. You say, well, I don't have uh, whatever. We all do. Even though we're saved or we ask Jesus in our heart, we still have a wicked nature. Everyone, we have to consistently, continually look to him because that's our cross, friend. That's the cross that we have, but that's not our excuse. We're supposed to bear that cross. Amen. Come on, that's hard preaching there, isn't it? So what is, uh, uh, the to reveal means this. It means to make known and to reveal secrets. So the purpose for this is for God to reveal to mankind how wicked they are. To let them secrets be known. Now, uh, what, is, uh, what is man's true nature? So when we talk about the nature of man, I want you to understand when he's talking about your nature, he's talking about your, how about this, essence. What you think and you don't say. Can I tell you something? The one that does know, you wish he wouldn't. You can hide it from the preacher, which it doesn't matter whether you do or not, because that's between you and the Lord. I'm, I'm not walking around trying to find out your essence. I got enough of my own. Amen. Right? I do. I got to worry about myself. Right? And uh, I've got enough to do with that. And uh, your essence is your nature, and there's things that you don't want people to know about. But guess what? God's going to reveal that. It's going to be revealed. And you know what's funny? During this tribulation, we're going to see how sick and wicked mankind really is. A lot of the wickedness that happens has nothing to do with God making them do it. It's God allowing them to reveal that. You know what's funny? We're in a prelude to the tribulation right now. Some of the nasty things that's going on and some of the things that are happening in America that we say, I don't understand why these things. I do because this is the prelude. I'm going to tell you something. If you, I'm being honest. If you don't wake up, uh, we're going to be raptured home before you have a chance to get right with God. Look around. I'm just being honest. I've talked to a lot of preachers. Where's the people? Why aren't people clinging to the church? They're not. They're not. Really helps you understand why does the gate narrow is the way. Where's all the true Christians who say they're Christians? What about the ones carrying the signs? I mean, why don't you not carry a sign and live the life? I'm just saying. Uh, you know what? A life works better than a sign because isn't that your sign? I, you can stand on a street and you hold a sign for the wages of sin is death. Well, we know that. Well, why don't you live a life so people can see that, so they'll know to ask you how to receive salvation. That's what people are looking for. They don't need your big sign. Why don't you live your sign? You know, I was told that a living sign is a better testimony than any sign. Or you could even, you know, the modern Christian says that that's why I get tattoos so that I can be a witness. Oh, really? The body's the temple of God. You're not supposed to do that. Why don't you live a Christian life so that they can see a difference in you and let that be your sign instead of tatting yourself up like a prophet of Baal. Boy, that's hard preaching there, isn't it? Actually, that's stuff that people don't really want to hear. And, you know, they say that it's judgment. It's not judgment. Wait till God begins to judge. We have a, we've seen a lot of people come through this church that have tattoos. I ain't condemning them. That's what they did in their past. And uh, we have a young man that usually is here on Wednesday night, and he knows that that's what he did in his past, and he's embarrassed by that. And uh, you know what? They can't take that back just like you can't take back your sin. But Christ washes from within. Isn't that great? 
Amen. If we'll just live our life and let people see Christ and take a stand for what we know is right. You know, being a Christian doesn't mean we bend over backwards and let everybody walk over us and don't take a stand for what God teaches us in our heart that we know is right. I'm not going to do what I know God tells me I shouldn't do. I want to live what's right. You say, well, what's your choice going to be on that? Well, my choice on that is going to be whether or not God tells me I should do it or not. And there's a lot of things that the world's doing that this pastor's not doing because I don't feel that's what God wants. Amen. If they jump off a cliff, I'm not going. You can. I'm not going to do it. I'll tell you don't do it, but you've got to make your own mind up. So God wants to reveal man's true nature. That scares me. I'm going to be in heaven, so I won't be here, so that, that's fine. Lord, just wait till we get to heaven because I don't want to be around man. I know man, men are wicked. So we're talking about his essence, man's essence, his qualities, his attributes, his true character, his true, uh oh, listen to this, his true affections and his kind are going to be revealed. The rapture will be a time of separation when the children of the kingdom will be gathered in the Lord's house, leaving the children of the wicked one reserved for judgment. Now, remember this. We, uh, the Bible calls it the, the, the day of Christ, and it also calls that, it's the same day, okay? Uh, the day of Christ is for the church, and the day of the Lord is for the world and the lost. The day of the Lord is used for judgment, the day of Christ is used for, praise God, we get to go see Jesus, amen? And you say, well, we're going to stand before the throne. Yeah, who cares? We're saved, right? It's too late to worry about that there. We're saved. We're going to heaven. Yay! I'm not going to go through. Hey, amen. That's like saying when your dad says, well, you're not getting a spanking. Yeah, right? <laughs> praise God. We don't get spankings. Amen. God doesn't spake his own. He, he chastises us, us with love. That's different. You know, a lot of times we beat our own selves up. We want to blame God for him. That, that's such a lie. You hurt yourself. Amen. You got yourself in a financial bind. You got yourself into this issue. You made that choice. Hold on. You made that choice without asking me. Now you're going to blame me? That's what he says. All right, that's what he says. Uh, Miss Julia, you're going to get me. All right, the rapture of time. <laughs> I'm just teasing you, Miss Julia. The rapture will be a time of separation when the children of the kingdom will be gathered into the Lord's house. Isn't that great? Leaving the children of the wicked one. That's just fine with me. And it's the sad part, though, uh, child of God, is that some of those people that are considered the wicked one, left for the wicked one, are some of our family members. We've got to be in prayer. You say, preacher, I don't know if I can make uh, Saturday at 4. Come on now. We're praying for the church. And, and isn't praying for the church your family members getting to church? And salvation? We don't got time for that? Shame on us. In a lawless atmosphere, let me tell you something. If we don't have time to pray for just a little bit at 4 o'clock on Saturday, then we don't really think the rapture's close. You know what the disciples were doing when they thought Jesus was dead? They were the, the smart ones were gathered together. What were they doing? They were gathering together, comforting one another. And guess what? Jesus knew where they were. He came to where they were. And what happened? God gave them the breath of God. Now, I've told you about the breath of God. That's permanent, eternal. He gave them the Holy Spirit before anybody else got it. I don't know about you. That's pretty special. So he leaves the children of the wicked one reserved for judgment in the lawless atmosphere of Daniel's 70th week. And the wicked will quickly ripen for the harvest. Amen. Look at uh, just one verse in Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter number 14. We kind of wanted to try to see. Oh, we got time. Revelation chapter 14. Look at verse number 15. It says, And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on a cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Amen. Uh, boy, I'm telling you, look at, look at your notes. The true character of man. Now, this is, I want you to look at this. Turn over to Revelations chapter 9. That's scary. Revelations chapter 9. Look at verse 20. 
Revelation 9, verse 20. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet... Now, are you, are you there? Amen. I want you to see this. Yet repented, what? Not. not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils. That means they were going to continue doing it. And idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Talking about they aren't really gods, they're just things. And verse 23 says, Neither repented they of their murderers, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornications, nor of their thefts. Uh, I don't understand that. They have all these things that happen to them, yet they're still not to the, they're not going to repent. That's just fine. Oh, I guess that, I don't want, no, hey, I didn't die. I'm good. I'm going to keep going. Uh, you know, in all reality, if you think about it, America is almost to a point right now where people just think they're good. Yeah. yeah, here's the, she, she brought it up, but I, I, I still am wondering why we haven't heard from the families of the 13. But we have a drug dealer, a drug addict. But what about the 13 men who died because we left them in Afghanistan? If that don't turn your stomach, that's just got to be something wrong. Why aren't we having their families on television and asking them how they feel? I haven't heard one thing. Have you heard anything? It's sad. It's, we're in a sad state. Really are. Really are. You know, I just want you to understand it has nothing to do with our president. It has everything to do with the church. Not just ours. The church. The heart of the church. It shows, the heart of the church shows in the nation and its leaders. And we're quiet. You know, what's interesting is I, uh, I was talking to that uh, man on Sunday and he goes, uh, I know what to do. I just don't know what about it, how, to, how to go about doing it. You know what I begin to think of? I begin to think of what's going on right now. And the reason why we're at is because of the fact the church knows what to do. They just don't think they know how to do anything. And we've been passive for so long, we don't know how to take a stand for anything. You know, uh, I, I'm 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 take stand. I know it's it's awkward, but I'm gonna take a stand. Reminds me of when I went to the hospital and they were trying to make me wear a, a mask, and I was like, "Well, I'm sorry, but uh, my governor says I don't have to wear a mask. I'm Biden by his law." Well, the hospital says, "Well, he said that the, your, any uh, any public facility cannot force me to wear a mask." I had to show him that paper. But I was the odd person because throughout the whole hospital, everybody's looking at me. But you know what, child of God, we're supposed to be the odd ones taking a stand. We're not supposed to be the ones rolling over. We stand for truth. The truth. And let me tell you something. You're not going to get truth on TV anymore. They can't even get the weather right. I remember when you used to go on the, the TV and you could watch news. When I was younger, you could watch news and you could know if they were telling the truth or not. Now you can't, you can't listen to anything they have to say because everything is pivoted towards one thing and it's all lie. Everything. You say, where is this coming from? Well, it's coming from God's revealing men's. I'm, I'm telling you, church, if you're not, your eyes aren't open to see what, God, what the real character of man is, man, I'm telling you, the church is not in a very good way. The true character of man will be seen here in Revelations chapter 9, verse 20 and 21. It speaks of rampant idolatry, murderer, sorcery, fornication, and theft, and nothing happens because they do it. Huh. Now, 
I don't mean to bring up history, but we've had some political people that have gotten away with murder, and we know they've done it. Whether it's of babies or full-grown people, we know they've murdered people, and there's nothing happened to them, and we clearly have evidence of it. Why is that? It's funny because if I even go through a stop sign, I get a ticket. The Lord's like, hey, you, know, you, you better obey man's laws. Amen? But I'm going to obey God's laws over man's laws. Now, God didn't tell me to run the stop sign. That was me. Now, I didn't, get, I didn't run the stop sign. I just used that term. I didn't run the stop sign. Amen? Not that they caught me anyway. Amen? <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> got you on that one. Number four. I better move on. Number four. Uh, number four, so what is the what is the reason and what what's going on here? What is God trying to do? Why is he doing this? Well, look at number four, uh, to punish sin. They won't get it right, and if you won't get right your sin right, what, what, has, what has to happen if you won't confess and get your sin right with him? What happens? Judgment. Uh, you either get right and take the payment, or you have to pay with judgment, okay? And so God is, this is going to be an awful time of a judgment on the earth to allow for the Jews and all those are there to accept Jesus, okay? So they don't really have to go through all this judgment. They could just get saved, couldn't they? But that's not really how man is. Mankind is very stubborn. Look at yourself. And what it takes to get you to be motivated and do what you're supposed to do, whether or not you want to do it or not, right? Come on. I mean, remember when you were younger and you thought that you could wait one more month to pay your power bill and you found out that they wouldn't wait one more month and they shut the power off, right? So number four, what's the purpose? The purpose is to punish sin. So punishment is uh, for disobedience and uh, punishment is a form of calamity or pain. You know, what's interesting, if you touch something that's hot, what happens right away? Yeah, but all of your attention is on that, right? You know, I, uh, uh, my hands are numb by this point, so when I'm working and I cut myself uh, today, I didn't actually know I cut myself until after I had blood everywhere, and blood's, I'm like, where's that red stuff coming from, huh? I'm like, oh, man, that was bleeding bad, all right? But typically, amen, if you hold your finger over a flame for too long or if you touch the exhaust pipe of a motorcycle, you know for quite a while. And all of your brain is not thinking about, hmm, I can't wait till dinner time. You're thinking about, oh, my word, this hurts, and I got to get this pain taken care of. You know what? You wonder why God brings judgment because he's trying to get focus. And it seems like as humans, we have to have some kind of pain to get everything out of our mind so that we can focus on the one who matters. Punishment for sin. The holiness of God demands that man's lawlessness not go unpunished. That's why Jesus died on the cross. You say, you should be a better soul winner after leaving tonight than you ever were because you don't want anybody to go through this. Sin must be dealt with. Romans 6.23, I know that we know these, but let's turn there. It's good for us to be refreshed. And I'm, I'm wondering when the last time we read Romans 6.23 to somebody. The, these are important scriptures for you to, to give to people because the number one thing is to help people understand that they need to be saved is they have to understand they're sinners. You want to know how to make sure they know they're Because the first thing that we hear, just like on Sunday, I don't really sin much. Really? Really? You ever think of murdering somebody? Uh, yeah, okay, well then you're going to go to hell. Right? <laughs> because the Bible says, as you think in your heart, so have you done, right? In the New Testament. <laughs> so I, you, there's anybody that's made it through the Ten Commandments, are they? No. Have you ever lied? Oh, I don't, I've never heard anybody ever say that they've never lied. I was like, well, even if you lied one time, you're still going to hell because uh, you lied. And you can't pay for that lie. Amen. Amen. 
All right, so sin must be dealt with. Let's look at Romans 6, 23, and we should be using this verse after we show them why they need to be saved by using the Ten Commandments. Ask them if they've ever lied. Everyone has lied. For the way, even babies, when they cry for no reason, they're lying. All men are liars. That includes babies. For the wages of sin is what? Death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, you got to show them why they're a sinner, and you got to show them what the payment for that sin. He will say, "Well, just one lie. I got to go to hell." Well, no, Jesus paid for it. You got to accept the free gift. Boy, I tell you, there's a lot of people that should be here tonight. Galatians six and verse number nine. Galatians 6, right after 2 Corinthians. Look at verse number 9. 6 and verse 9. And here, this is, this is something the church needs to hear. What does it say? It says, and let us, what? Not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Not be weary. A lot of Christians are weary. But we really haven't worked. Do you know the Bible says that his work is light. It makes you joyful. That's probably why we're weary. Right? Amen. Uh, boy, that'll preach, won't it? All right. So uh, with the onset of Daniel's 70th week, the dam of God's long suffering will finally burst. Turn to Second Peter chapter number 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Look at verse number 9 and 10. 2 Peter 3, 9 and 10. Are we there? 2 Peter 3, verse 9 and 10. Everyone's there. All right, it says, The Lord is not what? Slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but as long-suffering to us were, not willing that any should perish. That's amazing, isn't it? But that all should come to repentance. He wants everyone to go to heaven, but they have to choose it. That's a sad thing. But you know, I can't be saddened because somebody else makes their own choice. I've got to go forward. Amen? I've got to keep going forward. All I can do is tell. The Father draws. The Father saves. All I do is tell. I've got to be the teller, amen? Are you the teller? Look with me, verse number 10. Uh, but the day of the Lord, uh-oh, will come as a what? Thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall met with a fervent heat, and the earth also with the works that, uh, that are therein shall be burned up. The day of the Lord, that is the same time as the day of Christ. That is when we're raptured home. That's when they'll believe a lie. If they've had opportunity to accept Jesus Christ, which that is most adults. There ain't very many people I've ever met that have never heard of Jesus. Amen. And they'll believe a lie. Amen. All right, look down. <coughs> Uh, lawlessness will overtake the earth and God's wrath will be poured upon an unregenerate, unrepentant earth. Look at Revelation 16. Look at verse 9 through 11. <clears throat> now these are, this is going through the vials when he begins to pour the vials down. These aren't our vials of prayers that he keeps. These are different vials of judgment, which we'll be going over. But look down at verse number 9. It says, And the men were scorched with great heat. We think it's hot in Texas now. And blasphemed the name. Can you imagine all this stuff they're going through, and they're still going to blaspheme God? And blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues. And they did what? repented not to give him glory. Isn't that, isn't, that, isn't that awful? And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they what? Nod their tongues for pain. 
They were in so much pain, they would chew their tongue. Now, it's not just, you got to imagine what kind of pain it takes to really chew a hole in your tongue. Go look what gnaw means. I didn't look that word up, but go look that up. Make that something you'll do. Amen. All right. So he's going uh, he's gonna to put out his punishment of, on the unregenerate, unrepentant earth. Amen. Now, number five. So uh, his purpose is to punish sin. I, I was going to read more of those, but you go ahead and check those out. Uh, number five, uh, to recompense those who have persecuted the churches. <laughs> those that persecuted the churches will get theirs. Per, uh, recompense, R-E-C-O-M. P-E-N-S-E. Does, uh, uh, you know I'm going to ask you what recompense means, right? <laughs> it means to repay. Remember, the Bible says that he is the one, not us. He's the rewarder. It's not your job. You're not supposed to go around, well, I'm going to get you back. No, that's not your job. You keep focused on doing what's right for the Lord the Lord will pay them back. Let me tell you something, and don't look back and say, you better watch out, God's going to do this, because then he's not. He doesn't do what you want. And their reward will come when he wants to do it. Whether they have to wait through hell, amen, or the judgment. But let me tell you something, during the tribulation, there will be no waiting. There will be payment. And all those who persecuted the church called me Bible thumper. And all kinds of names that they like to call Christians, they're going to get theirs. God's going to recompense them. You know what he's going to do? He's going to repay them back for their nastiness. Amen. Amen. It also means, huh, I like this, to repay is kind of shallow, but he's going to require payment. You say, what do you mean? Payment or judgment for their sin. they got to pay for their sin. Well, guess what that means? shouldn't bring us glory or make us happy. It really doesn't. It kind of chokes me up. Because no matter how wicked they've been to me, they still, I would still wish they would get saved because Paul killed the church, and look what he did once he accepted Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Look what you've done in your life against him. Amen. God can change people. We were wicked. We shouldn't want people to, well, you're going to burn in hell. We should never say that to anybody. We shouldn't want anybody to, to burn in hell, no matter how much we hate them. That's not, you know what, we need to pray for those people that God will open their eyes, the eyes of their heart, so they understand that, you know what, one, they won't want to be in hell. It's not a joke. All right. Recompense is to require, to repay, or to compensate. Now, uh, that compensation, we've kind of went over, we kind of understand what their compensation is, don't we? Amen. So let's turn over to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians um, chapter one. Look at four through six. Are we there? Second Thessalonians one, four through six. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye what? Endure, which is a manifest token of righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to do what? Uh-oh, there it is. It is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that do what? Trouble you. It's God's righteousness, not yours. Same to you, buddy. No, that's not your job. Let God do that. I already know. I know I'm just like you. I don't like that either. 
whatever you're thinking of. I don't like it either, but let God be the recompense. Let Him be the rewarder. Let Him hold them uh, accountable for that. Amen? It's not your job. You know, I think a lot of times we have a lot of anxiety for things we have no reason to be anxious about. That's not your job. Your job is to follow Him. How hard is that? Let Him do all of His worrying. That's, there's no worrying for God. He already knows what the plan is. Follow it. Follow Him. Amen. So the church of the Thessalonians was undergoing severe tribulation, which the Lord said was but a what? Token. It says it right there in the scriptures. We just read it. And a token means a small sample. It's like a prelude of what would happen, uh, uh, of what awaited for those who were persecuting him. The great whore will receive her just recompense we're gonna i'm not gonna read that because we're gonna go over that extensively when we get there but the great whore will receive her recompense amen i know a lot of people think that the great whore was the catholic church we'll get into that later all right what time is it all right we're gonna have to close right there yeah my pen disappeared all right well we'll stop there we'll pick up on uh c and actually what's interesting is c will go really quick uh, that just kind of gives you an outline of what we're going to be going into. And we're going to start the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. I was excited. I thought maybe we'd get that tonight, but we're not. Uh, but I am super excited to start getting into the Four Horsemen. Uh, that's going to be amazing. Amen. All right. And you know what's interesting is we begin to see Jesus who's up in heaven because we've been talking about what's going to go on on earth. And uh, we're going to see Jesus. We've seen the Father give Jesus the what? The scroll, the sealed scroll. And there was only one in heaven that could open it. His name was Jesus. Okay, he has it in his hand. We've just been telling you what's going to happen down here. But what's interesting, now we're going to start looking in chapter 6 as he begins to open those. And what's interesting, if you want to go study ahead, is there's a lot of neat things that we're going to see there. And, uh, and it'll have to do with the, remember what the beast was, the cherub, amen? And their four faces were the uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Remember, those are all the pictures of Jesus' character. And we're going to see more of Jesus as he unlocks those seals. That's amazing. Remember, Revelations is the revelation of so everything reveals him. And what's interesting, uh, what we're going to see, I'm just giving you a little bit so you can be excited. We're going to see more of his character at each seal. I think it's so awesome. I'm so excited about that. So you pray that God will open it up even more uh, as we get closer. Let's go ahead and close in a word of prayer. We'll ask God to uh, put his hand on Nate and to give you a good remainder of the week. Heavenly Father God, Lord, we love you. Father, we're so thankful, Lord, that we know that we're saved. And, Father, we know that when you call us home, Lord, we'll be raptured. But, Father, I pray, Lord, as a child of God, we'd have a heavy heart as we look around at the world today. And Lord, knowing, Lord, there's so many people that need Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And, Father, I pray, Lord, tonight would uh, just excite us and help us to see a little bit more in a, a clear way how we can present the gospel and help people who are lost see the need of Jesus Christ. And Father, uh, if it's not evident now more than ever, Father, I pray we'd be urgent. And Lord, I pray that you go with each and every one of us. Father, give us a good remainder of the week. Help keep us safe. Help us to be a good testimony for you. And Father, we pray for Nate and Kim Brader. Father, as he is doing well, and we give you praise for that, and we're thankful for that. And Lord, we ask you to continue to touch his lungs and be with his medical staff and continue to give him the, uh, uh, the positive joy that he has and affirm in his life, Lord, continually, Lord, that you are the one in control. You are the great physician. And Lord, we, just, uh, we look forward to seeing him better and knowing that you've healed his body. And Father, we are careful to give you praise for that. And Father, we ask you to continue to put your hand on Corinda's body. And Father, her, help her and her doctors. And Father, give them wisdom. And Lord, I pray that you'd be with Workman's Comp. And Lord, we know that sometimes we see things and don't understand why they make decisions that they do. But Father, we know you are God and you are in control. And Corinda and Nate, they are children of God. And Father, we ask, Lord, that you'd open their eyes. Father, help them to see and to have a, a more knowledge on direction and the way they should go. And Father, as we're praying this way, well, we ask you to pray for our, our country, Father, and our president.
Father, I know that we don't see it the way it should be. And Lord, we know that it's largely because of us. Lord, I pray the church would get their hearts right with God. Father, that the the nation of America, the America would see God in us. Father, and to see their need uh, for Jesus because of our testimony. And Father, it's going to take that power of God in the church. And Father, I pray, Lord, you just touch the church, not just Lighthouse. Father, anyone that proclaims Jesus Christ, Christ as their Lord and Savior, that we would get serious with God. And Father, have a testimony. Lord, America needs it. The United States needs it. People need it. And Father, we pray, Lord, that it would reach all the way to the White House. And Father, we ask, Lord, we don't, I don't believe it's so, but Father, I pray that if our president doesn't know Jesus Christ, that even our prayer here at the small church, Father, he would be convicted in a way, Lord, with the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And Lord, he would look up and know that he needs to accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And Father, we love you. Father, we know that that's your great will and that's what you've done as you've provided a way for all to go to heaven. And Father, that is the church's job is to proclaim Jesus. And Father, I pray that we be excited as we leave Lighthouse Baptist Church tonight and knowing that we are just a small reflector of what Jesus has done for us. And Father, we would show others how that Jesus has changed our lives so that they would want their lives to be changed as well. Father, we love you. And Father, we just give you all the praise. And we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You are dismissed.